You go have a cat fit, man. Let's go. Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard here. Beautiful morning. It is cloudy. It's overcast. And it rained a lot last night. Today, or this morning, I'm at a creek. And this creek is absolutely muddy. It's high, muddy, running fast. Today, I'm going to attempt to catch some catfish in this creek. And um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do today. It's a little bit old-fashioned, outdated way of fishing, but it's a lot of fun. Stay with me. Well, there's the rod right there. It's 12 foot long fiberglass. It's an old rod, too. This rod was sent to me to fish with. And let's see what the name of it is. It's a Johnny Walker rod. Now this rod right here telescopes out to be 12 feet long, folks. And I'll show you what I'm doing today. Well, what I've done today right here as far as line, I'm using Berkeley Vanish. It's a 100% fluorocarbon line, 12 pound test. And I've tied a trilene knot to this eyelet. There's only one eyelet on this rod. And I've got a length of line on it about, I imagine that's about eight feet long, maybe a little bit more. And uh, even though I'm fishing for catfish, I'm going to use a size six true turn hook. Uh, it's a light wire hook. Now the reason I'm going to use this, there's a lot of hangs. A lot of hangs in this river right here. And even though the water is real muddy, the chance of catching a pan fish, well, it's possible. Especially red ears. Um, I've found that red ears, you know, muddy water a lot of time, times activates them to bite. But uh, we're going to tie this hook on. I'm probably just going to use a trilene knot on this too. I may have to use a split shot right here. I believe I'm going to go ahead and put a light split shot on account of the current. I'm going to look for eddies, folks. Little eddies. And we'll test around and see. But I imagine there's some channel cats that's wanting to bite. There's a little bitty split shot. I'm going to go about a foot above my hook and just cramp it. I hope I can get by with that. I don't like a big weight. One of the keys to fishing, I think, is using as, as light a weight as you possibly can in all situations. Uh, that's just an opinion, folks. <laughs> but I'm going to go look for some eddies right here and see if there's any fish piled up in them. And uh, today we're going to be using red worms. Let's see what we can do. Okay, see that current right there? Right here is an eddy. Uh, it looks like it's about eight feet in diameter, maybe. Right over here, looks like another good spot. Right here in this area here. Okay, so let's try those two places, right? See, you can really see it right here. The eddy starts here comes around and turns back so I feel like there's some fish right in here there we go oh my goodness look at this now folks I'm going to take my time with this fish right here I'll tell you why. I'll show you why. This is cool right here. This is real cool. Y'all see him out there? Some of you don't know what he is and some don't. But I've learned something. <laughs> I didn't know there was any in here. Come on in here, boy. 
I ain't, ain't that pretty. That is beautiful. He got it a little deep, but I can get him off without hurting him. Little Appaloosa. Now, I didn't know there was any in this river. Or creek here. But we do now. <laughs> that is a beautiful little fish right there. Let's let him go. Let's let that little predator go. He is the king of the catfish as far as I'm concerned. Let's catch another one. Whoa. Whoa. Now I'm just more or less folks right here just holding my rod in place. Nothing fancy. I'm moving it around a little bit and the current's moving my bait around a little bit and that's about it. My goodness. I don't know if y'all seen that. I might have had my body twisted. That fish knocked a fire out of that. More or less hooked itself. Well, it's a channel cat. Talking about fighting on this kind of stuff. I forgot how fun this was. Now this is how we used to do when our family would get together and we'd do just like this. Cane poles, all the kids would have them a cane pole apiece. Plenty of worms and fish like this would be a keeper. We'd have fish fries. Anything that bit. <laughs> Catfish, bluegill, little bass, anything. And we'd get together and have a have a ball that's the way families used to get together fish fries brought them together back in the day beautiful fish let's let him go there's fish in these creeks ain't no doubt about it but the timing when it comes to catfish is usually when the water is a little bit high and muddy. After a rain, <clears throat> a lot of baits you can use. I'm using red worms, of course. You could use uh, cut pieces of bluegill, crawfish, uh, anything like that to catch them. But finding them eddies, that's where they're going to be. Areas like this right here. And, uh, after I catch two or three, usually I'll move, folks. I do a lot of moving. But I'm going to try to catch one more right here. Golly, dang. What do we got right here? I'm going to have to be. Oh, my God. It broke my line. There you go. It's a good one, folks. This is a good one. What it is, I don't know, but I'm going to try to keep him on. Yeah, it's good. Pretty good channel cat. What about that? Uh-huh. I knowed it. I just hung with this eddy right here because I, I didn't have one break my hook off. Really, if I knew... They was catfishing here this big. I would have went ahead and went with, say, 20 pound fluorocarbon. This is a lot of fun, I'm telling you. Memories are just snapping in my head. My daddy used to, is the one who introduced me to a cane pole to start with. He's the one responsible for me having this affliction I have. And I thank him very much, very much. Let's see if we can get this catfish in here. <clears throat> That's a pretty good channel cat. Pretty good one. See, he don't have any spots. He's outgrown his spots. Ain't that cool? Go on back in there, creek cat. 
I don't know whether I need to hang with this. I'm going to move down and look for some more eddies. You know, and let this one rest. We may come back. But uh, it's apparent where the fish are. There's a fish. Dead gullet. Oh, no. Dead blame. That one was taken off. Now I need nothing. channel cat now how in the world am I going to land this fish way up here like this but I found me a good eddy right here that was an immediate bite just had walked up on it <laughs> Elmo he ain't here today hey I might be able to take him on down over here and get him we'll see yeah, I believe I can. We'll just come on around like this. Uh, what was I saying, folks? Oh, Elmo ain't here today uh, because it's windy. It's a little bit too windy for him. Now, we don't want him to get in that. Ah, we got him out here in the current now. Okay. I thought it was a good idea. Man, I tell you what, this limber pole, that's a lot of fun. They feel like they weigh 150 pounds when you get a hook in them. Quit. I'm trying, folks. <laughs> I'm in a mess right here. Whew. Look here. Quit, quit. No. There we go. Huh. Sorry about it, but it's just a little bit awkward right here. Channel cat, good eating size. I'd love to catch me another flathead. I thought that was pretty unique. Uh, the colors on that flathead is what was real beautiful. Uh, they're the prettiest of all catfish. But this one right now is pretty to me. I mean, he'd give me a battle. I'm going to put me another worm right in that little eddy because it was an immediate bite. They could be stacked up in there. Let's let him go. Go on back. All right. Let's see if we can catch our another. This is a lot of fun. It's relaxing too. Just easing around the bank and looking for particulars. In other words, minutia and details. That didn't make no sense. Let's catch another. Wow, that's a good bite right there. Yep. Got him, folks. Well, so far we do. My goodness, let's just be easy with him. Now, I knew there'd be a fish right there. Yeah, it took me a while to get him to bite, but... Yeah, he's taking advantage of this current right here. Channel cat, that's a perfect place. We'll look at that. Right here, them little old bees. Can y'all see them little bees? Some of them sweat bees and some of them's little biting bees. And they're eating me up. If you ever mash one of them in between you, right in here, well, there they are. If you ever mash one right, right in there, you've had it. Now, you're talking about hurt. But I got that channel, and I guarantee you there's another bite or two right in there because there's a lot of them. Got a little feeder creek back here <clears throat> because of the rain, it's flooded it, and it's washing down right here into the main creek right here, and it's, there's some stuff in there these fish is feeding on, so... Right, let's get him off and we'll, well, I'll try it again right here for a little while. It took about five minutes. Dang, gone them things eating me up. They look like little old bees and they're mean looking dudes. Let's, 
There he goes. One got me in the forehead. Okay. Let's try that again. See if we can catch one more fish. I'd like to go. Huh? I believe I'm going to come over here and try to catch one. Doggone them things. Right in here. Whew. I wish them things would eat me up. Dead gum. Yeah. There's a bite. Yep. Yeah. Got you, didn't I, boy? Look at that rod, folks. <laughs> I got him so far. This is pretty good catfish. Sure is. I'm going to let that rod do the work right here the best I can. Pretty doggone good one for a creek. Quiet. He'll wear out in a minute. Maybe. There he is. Pretty good channel, ain't it, folks? This is the way we done it when we was a kid. And before I was a kid, this is the way people done it. Survival. They wouldn't know throwing anything back back then. If it had eyes and a tail, it'd get eat. Now, if he'll quit, we'll look at him. That's a pretty fish right there. Real pretty fish. Uh, I'm going to try to drag him right here. I'm going against the grain. Well, let's see. That's a slick bank. We might have a dog on slipping right here. Okay, come on back here. Come on back. You're done, you're done, you're done, you're done, you're done. Come on. Let's show you off, knothead. All right. He's a pop at me with that tail. Pretty good fish right there for a creek. Is it or is it not? He's missing the whisker right here. For some reason. He just got a nubbin. <laughs> Let's let him go. That was a heck of a fight. Thought I had me a little flathead for a minute. I'm still wanting to catch one. Let's slide him back in there. There he goes. Well, folks, we're back. I enjoyed that. That's the first time that I've fished like that in years since I was a kid. Like I said, cane poles is what I started off with. This is pretty close to a cane pole. There's a lot of different techniques and applications that I've, I've been thinking about that I can use this rod on this channel in a lot of different ways. But I want to give a shout out to Mr. Paul Benham, Benham from Grayville, Illinois for sending this rod to me. He wrote me a letter and he said he wanted to give me this long crappie rod. Um, hope you and your wife can catch something out of those hard to reach brush piles. Been a lot of fish caught on it. Uh, I would be honored if you would accept this. Love your channel. Well, Paul, it's an honor to me that you sent this to me. It was broke in, and it's going to get broke in some more, I guarantee you. And uh, thank you very much, and God bless you too, sir. And, hey, woo. Yeah!